Okay, so I know you guys are all excited to see The Giver in movie theaters as a class trip. And since we read it as a class, we're going to continue to analyze it. I know we've already talked about theme and a bunch of things like that, but to refresh you guys' memory before this lesson, I want to show you guys the trailer. Okay, so we're going to continue to analyze this book before we go and see the play because I want you guys, want you guys to know everything possible about it before we go see it. So I picked out a poem that, I, that we're going to look at together today, and um, we're going to compare that viewpoint to the viewpoint of Jonas from The Giver. So what is the aim of today's lesson? By the end of today's lesson, I want everyone to be able to compare the viewpoint of the narrator of the battlefield, which is the poem I picked out, to Jonas from The Giver. So what is a viewpoint? Before we talk about it, does anyone have any idea what a viewpoint is? Um, it's the way that a certain person sees something. Exactly. So the way people see an event. So to give you guys a perspective on what a viewpoint really is, I have this little thing for you. So what is the point of view? An automobile accident occurs. Two drivers are involved. Witnesses include four sidewalk spectators. A policeman, a man with a video camera who happened to be shooting the scene and the pilot of a helicopter and points of view, and most likely nine different descriptions of the accident. So a viewpoint from two people who are at the same event can be totally different. So your opinion, a lot of things can affect that. So I'm just gonna go over what we talked about already about Jonas from The Giver. So things that you guys have previously told me in lessons when we analyzed him was that he was brainwashed to believe that everything is perfect. He lives in a society where everything is conformity, everything is the same, and he's supposed to believe that it's all perfect. Um, they, everyone in his society was brought up to be afraid to be different. No one can step out of line and everyone does what they're told. Um, he also gets fake first impressions, so from the outside looking in, it may seem like he lives in a perfect society, which is what dystopian novels are all about. A perfect society that looks perfect, dystopian novels are all about. A perfect society that looks perfect, but it's not. And everything appears to be perfect, but it's not. So I handed out you guys poems called The Battlefield by Cordelia Nobles. So first I want to let you guys know a little bit about this poem. So this poem was written by a sixth grader in a different school. So I thought it was really cool for you guys to be able to read something by someone who is your peer. So maybe you might have the same viewpoint as them. So I think it's kind of cool that it kind of shows that your work can go outside of the classroom and affect other people. So while we're reading this poem, I want you guys to underline parts of the poem that stood out to you. So maybe something that made you think, or something that you think really added to the poem. And then once we're finished, we're going to write on the side of the poem what you think it meant. So I'm going to read this poem to you now. Battlefield is a battlefield. First, you meet new people. They all have smiles on their faces, being so friendly and nice. But then, Everything changes. Months and months go by, and you meet them again. But this time, there are grins instead of smiles. People stare, eyes like knives. And wars break loose every day. Then you find yourself in a death battle. 
Flying grenades shoot through the hallways, always trying to dodge bullets. You feel the pain of getting stabbed in the back and wonder, what are we fighting for? So I'm going to give you guys a few seconds now to just look it over again, underline some things. Okay, can someone raise their hand and tell me what someone raise their hand and tell me what they underlined in the poll? Well, I underlined that middle school is a battlefield. Middle school is a battlefield. Yeah, that's pretty much the entire theme of the poem. And battlefield is definitely a theme and it stands for things, which we'll talk about later. Okay, so now I want you guys to all take a few seconds to write on the side of your page what you think the poem actually means. What is the main idea? What is the theme? Okay, now I want you guys to turn and talk to your partner and tell them before you tell me what you think the poem means. Okay, good. So can someone raise their hand and tell me what you and your partner talked about? Um, well, we talked about that things aren't always as they seem, like in middle school, like you get so excited for it, and then when you finally go, it's not as great as it seems, like like in middle school, like you get so excited for it, and then when you finally go, it's not as great as it seems, like you're the youngest in the building, and it could be scary. Definitely, just like in The Giver, when things aren't as they seem, kind of like a dystopian novel, where things look perfect from the outside, but once you get in there, you realize it's a battlefield. Good. Okay, so here are some things that... I thought about this. So everything we see is now it seems. Should we trust people? We talked about people stare, eyes like knives. This time there are grins instead of smiles. So how should you trust people? Conformity. Everyone, like in The Giver, society is supposed to be the same uniform. Is that the same with middle school? And intimidation. Also similar to The Giver. Like the people in charge, authority, they intimidate you to be like everyone else, because they make you afraid to be different. Authority, how can you trust people, and the responsibility that you get with growing up. So, now I gave you guys a worksheet, and I hand it out. Um, there are a few questions on it, like what word would you use to describe the author of the poem? So I'm going to give you guys a few seconds. So as I was walking around watching you guys do this with your partner, I saw some really good answers. So can someone raise their hand and tell me what word you would use to describe the author of the poem? Um, well, I said that they might be the author might be suspicious because they're very like scared of everyone else and like very aware of all the people around them. Yeah, definitely, and that goes in with the theme of trust that we talked about before. Okay. <clears throat> if you could ask Jonas and the author of this poem one question, what would it be? Um, uh, well, I would ask them, have you considered what, that people's actions don't repeat, reflect, sorry, <laughs> reflect on their true emotions? Like, people may act differently than they actually feel. Mm -hmm. So, if you're scared of others actually be what they're really feeling, you might just be putting that picture in their head. Definitely, which also goes with the theme that we talked about before, fake first impressions and things like that. Okay, so as you know, at the end of this unit, we're going to end it with a comparison essay which you guys have been practicing. Um, I'm just going to go over before you guys start how you're going to write your thesis. Um, so your sentence frame is going to be, I believe this because. So you're going to tell me why you believe what your thesis says. So I gave you guys a rubric, but let's go over it real quick. Um, the comparative analysis essay. Um, I'm just going to go over what the three to four grade, it, what it would look like. So your thesis will address a theme and its appearance in two texts, thoughtfully and demonstrates complex thinking. Thesis is strong, clear, and concise. So that's, a, we've practiced thesis before, but that's exactly what your claim. Each claim is a unique inference that comes from details in the text. Your explanation of the evidence proves your claim. So now let's talk about the writing process. All steps of the writing process, meaning planning, drafting, revising, editing, <clears throat> publishing, were used effectively to produce a strong essay. So in this overall task, what I'm really looking for is you clearly identify a theme in the giver and one or more additional examples. Demonstrate the theme's appearance in each through examples and interpret the author's message in your analysis. 
You give sufficient and effective evidence and explain your ideas with clear, thoughtful writing. So now you guys know exactly what I'm looking for with these essays. So I'm going to give you some time at the end of this class to start it. And I can walk around and help you guys. And I have some charts to help you guys organize your thoughts. So I'm going to walk around now and help anyone who needs. needs.